You're listening to the Poco a Poco podcast, sponsored by Spirit Juice Studios. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Father Mark Mayer. Father Angel's here. Father Innocent. We're the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal and this is the Poco a Poco podcast. Good to be with you again. As always. As always. Uh, so as promised, just we need to check in on Father Innocent. <laughs> Do we need really? to, while, while it's still light, do you need to run to the bathroom? No, I'm good. Be okay? I, I prepared. Um, I am drinking water as, as I tend to do Should we take these the water things? away from you? Or are you going to be all right? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks, dad. I'm good. I wouldn't have to act like your dad if you didn't act, act like a child. Like a <laughs> seven, seven year old. I can't believe we're talking about this on, on the show, but just ready to go. That's all. We just got to do whatever it takes. Um, it's Sponsored by Spirit Juice Studios. Thanks, Spirit Juice, for making this happen. And I'm sure this advent has been out a ton of stuff, so check them out. The Facebook page, Spirit Juice Studios, and we're still going for that 2K for the Keenum. When we mean Poco Poco, we don't mean this Poco Poco. <laughs> <laughs> if we could. Some things we want to do pretty rapidly. Yeah. Let's, let's go for it. Hard and, hard and fast. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's... let's, let's Take a break from Poco Poco for a second on those ratings. On just one of those, yeah. Just That's Apple all. Apple Podcast ratings are helpful. And um, I had my first, I think my first day actually cooking in the friary yesterday. Oh, well, well, cooking cooking's a strong word because I don't think you actually... No, you definitely cooked. cooked. You absolutely cooked. You warm stuff up, but the you also cooked the sausage. sausage the sausage. Okay, I take that back. And you had help, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong team? Bro... I, t- I take that back. Don't look at me like that. I take it back. I forgot about the sausages that you put on a pan and you put in the oven. I, I'm very. I'm sorry about all the effort that took there and and skill. I was that proud. That took. I was proud. Wow. <laughs> wow. A little uh, a little quarantine update. Can I tell you a little grace? You guys ready for this? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, I like we we split up in the dinner because right there's too many people in one room. It's kind of nice having four people in each room and and. Because you have one conversation, you get to know, I think got shift a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I, at dinner last night, I was like, you know what? This could be like a, one of those things you learn from quarantine. Not that we have to eat separately all the time, but like every once in a while, you're like, everybody splits up, like having dinner in small groups, you know, or yeah. instead like of that. Ni- 19 people. It's- yeah. That's one of the reasons I've, I've usually gone to those front rooms as well during this time. Cause so. it's nice to be, have like four people at a table. Yeah. Although in the in the main refectory where Father Innocent and I were last night, we had I think it was one conversation for the most part. We had one conversation with probably eight people. Yeah, and we talked about memory, funny memories of CFR formation and life, and and Father Innocent's high school dating record. <laughs> that is <holy> wow. God. <laughs> That's I mean we could keep it at that. It wasn't an extensive record <laughs> for the record. Oh, uh, well, I mean we we don't have to talk about it, but that the fact that it wasn't an extensive record <laughs> is not necessarily accurate. <laughs> But that's not what this podcast is about. The point was, is that it's nice. To Can we just share room. the one thing that, ev- that everybody was like? I was trying to get you no, out of it no, and you're going right no, back into it. No, we're not sharing anything anything about. Okay. All right. I'll, or I'll, I will tell. You'll tell what? That you, all your girlfriends were taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dangerous to talk about past girlfriends and past relationships. Thank you, friars, Father Mark Because Mark. they'll come up. At different yes. points to to um, <clears throat> bite you here. So anyway, how about how about the one of the brothers uh, watching Bella story? That's a great story. That's a that's a great story. We can tell that story because but he's going to be on. Maybe we'll have him oh, tell. Well, him now that. now we can't. <laughs> now you know who oh, it is. Right. Anyway, I don't think he would be. He would mind that, or maybe he would. A friar who was discerning but hadn't quite made. I mean, he made a few mistakes, but he hadn't quite made the jump yet. <laughs> and he tell, still had I'm a girlfriend. You, and he, he didn't tell his girlfriend. Was watching the movie Bella in the movie theater. And a couple, that's, if you've seen the movie Bella, <laughs> but there's a couple of CFRs who show up and he responded, hey, that's the, what is it? That's the vocation director, something like that. And she looked at him like, <laughs> how do you, how do you know that's the vocation director? <laughs> he got super excited. Bummer. Anyway, Mercy. just so you know that Father Innocent and Angelus both went to Rascal Flats concerts. <laughs> wow With we dates. are just going all I'm from over. Nebraska that's all. That's yeah, I'm all. from Nebraska gosh <laughs> don't give me that look, how did bro? this become about Rascal Flats all of a sudden because about- that's where he went on his first date when his girlfriend had to drive him because he was too young to drive <laughs> Oh my god, we wow. totally <laughs> Wow. Oh wow, we need to transition we quickly. You're lucky. Come, You're my friend, Father Mark Mary. Come Lord Jesus. 
and then just real quick, because I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna, bring, we're gonna get serious, but I'm gonna bring you. This is we're gonna address this at the end, because where I was going with the whole cooking thing is I had a chance. I I stumbled upon this by accident, because I'm just still getting to know the guys. Y- y'all had a, a particular in your time away where you're on kind of your quarantine retreat. I think probably got to know them pretty well. But I asked the question. One of the questions I asked is, if you're gonna be deserted, no, stranded on a deserted island, and you could take one superhero one cartoon character and one human being like alive or dead and all your spiritual needs are taken care of because if we didn't say that they would all take the same things who would, you, who, who would you take who would you take just so you know Ange, i would take you bro unbelievable <laughs> no we're gonna ask we're, you're gonna it's have so to answer touching. it anyway after we close we're gonna come back and i'm gonna ask you guys to answer that oh my gosh Myst- mystic mike i got permission to share mystic mike chose superman Superman's going to take care of him, protect him, just do everything. I said, how do you know he's going to do that? Maybe he's going to fly away and leave you and like not do any of that. Oh my gosh. Princess Jasmine, because he has somebody to just talk to. She, he felt like she'd be a good listener. <laughs> Bro, that's a, that might be a formation issue. Why? <laughs> he just wants somebody to talk to. And then his buddy Martin. That's awesome. If Martin, you're listening to this, he would take you, bro. It was between Martin and, and James Beresh. <laughs> Martin, you know. He took Martin at this point. Princess Jasmine, bro. I, there's all, something off there. What do you mean? <laughs> He's got six sisters. Uh, fair enough. I'm just as he a one his formator. I just don't know how I feel about that. He just wanted somebody to talk to. I took Superman. I didn't really have a cartoon character yet because I don't really know any cartoon characters. I feel like Superman's the super the superhero you have to go with. I know I have a guess who you'll choose, Father Angelus, but... What's the Superman? Everybody's I think it took PT. Superman. Father PT is my human being right now. That's fun. He's he's kind he's kind of cool, easygoing. Plays music, pretty handy. We can play sports. We know how to like leave each other alone if we need space. <laughs> That's why you wouldn't take us because I wouldn't leave you alone. Well, I mean, among other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what we're doing right now is um, so we'll come back at the end and see what <clears throat> Father Angelus and Innocent. What superhero I'm be thinking think. about that answer that question. But anyway, what, why I asked, like, what I brought, because it was actually a really cool way to, like, get to know some of the guys. Like, one guy wanted, he wanted, it was a Little Mermaid, Aquaman, <laughs> oh, and the oldest person alive. Because either the Little Mermaid and Aquaman were going to help him get off the island, or they'd be, like, in the water and leave him alone. And the oldest oh, man gosh. alive would not be alive that much longer, so he could be alone. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like so, a psychological evaluation. Yeah, so everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone's kind of got their, their needs. Mercy. Oh my gosh. Was that Can, too much? I, no, no, it's not too much, but I feel like you're forming the young men. I mean, I think this is like... I'm, a, not, I'm just listening to them. I'm getting to know them. <laughs> I didn't do it to be like oh, sneaky, but I, love it. I feel I love like it. I get to know them a little bit. I love it. All right. So we, we've been working through in a very, very like obscenely manly way. <laughs> Overly manly way. Overly manly, like weirdly manly way. We've been working through Maranatha... The story of our savior blessed is she advent devotional sort of loosely this book is dedicated to the women of the universal church who long for seek out and find joy in community may the lord reveal himself to you more profoundly and draw you into his family sister that's not what it says but it does say sister a couple of times but uh yeah we're doing it in a manly way but if you want to get it and go deeper you can check that out we also are recommending alfred delps just say what it is advent of the heart seasonal sermons and prison writings Excellent. Which, I haven't, at some point I'll reference it here, but probably not this episode. When you, you're, anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. I think we got to get into it. Um, Jeremiah 31, chapter 31, verse 31 to thir- and 33. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will put my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Check this out, people. I will make a new covenant. I will put my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Just this, this way in which, um, like the Lord and through the prophet Jeremiah, it's a perfect for, for Advent is the Lord saying all these things he's going to do, right? He's not saying you're going to, make this new covenant with me. You're going to have to put the law within you. You're going to have to write it upon your heart. You're going to have to come to me. You're going to have to be my people. It's like the Lord's going to do this. 
and Father Angelus mentioned it before, but it's a perfect Advent thing, this idea of do we have expectations of God? Because mm. Advent, the church marks Advent as a time of joyful expectation. Um, so so do you, like, let's, let's look at that. Do we have expectation of God? Are our hearts, do we have joyfully expectant hearts because the Lord has promised that he will make a new covenant, that he will be our God, that he will write his law upon us, that he will be um, our God and he will make us his people. What do you guys got here? It's just, it's beautiful to continue to recognize the initiative of God in our lives. And and I feel like sometimes it's like we need a plan or a recipe or a blueprint for spirituality, for holiness. And I think we say it on the show often too, is that basically it starts with availability. Is is our hearts, are our hearts available to the grace of God, to the working of God, to the initiative of God. And sometimes we don't want to be too passive, but the spiritual life is a lot more passive than we think. We don't have to earn things. We don't have to prove things. We, it's not our work. Uh, S- Sister Ruth Burroughs, who's actually a kind of like a modern day Therese, uh, St. Teresa of Avila. She lives in England. She's an old nun and she writes about prayer. And she, and she always, re- it's so beautifully, and I always think of this when we talk about prayer. My brothers and sisters, prayer is God's work ultimately. It's God's initiative in our life ultimately. And there's such a simplicity in that. We don't have to do anything but makes our, make our hearts available to God for him to be able to come in and allow us to experience his presence and allow us to experience his grace um, and so on and so forth. The challenge is, is are our hearts available? And in our availability to God, do we long for him? Do we look for him? Do we seek him? And do we expect a lot of him? And that's what Advent's about is assessing the availability of our hearts to what God is doing and to God's initiative. Um, lest we be confused, like this is at the heart of it. This, God is on his way. He is pursuing us. We talk about us longing for God. He's longing for us. And he he's in, 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 has, is hungry for us, but we have to make our hearts available to him. And I think like this is a transition that needs to be made. And this is the place to begin is to recognize that mm-hmm. truth. But before you jump in, just to, to cement what you <clears throat> said in catechism is, uh, again, we've talked about this idea of Christianity being response relationship and particularly prayer. The catechism 2566 says, no, 2567. Um, in prayer, the faithful God's initiative of love always comes first. Our own first step is always a response. So just, yeah, just to say that again, like, again, it is, it's, it's God, our prayer and our religion. It's, it's his, he comes first, right? It's his initiative and we respond. Father Angels brought it up. Like we, we have some pretty holy Carmelites. We have St. Teresa of Avila, but we also have St. Therese who talks about this, this experiencing this, this radical love of God and the closeness of God. And she's actually overwhelmed by this. And then this relationship breaks open, right? And she realizes that as a little child, she's just this little girl that the father wants to give her everything, right? And the father will ask her like, you know, what do you want? And she, and what her famous lies, what? Like I choose all, right? She sits before the father, she sits before Jesus. And she just has this radical expectation as this like, little girl that God's going to give her everything. God's going to provide everything, right? And St. Therese says <clears throat> that God gives us small things because we ask for small things. God gives us small graces because we ask for small graces and we don't expect that the, that the Father is going to just lavish his love and mercy and presence upon us. And so she breaks that open. And then she, she asks us as little children to, to just expect everything from the Father. The Father will do everything. He will, he will hold nothing back from you. <clears throat> and sometimes I think we think the father like lives like that or like, oh, I'm going to hold myself back or, or I think we've been let down a lot. And so I think we've been hurt where we somehow it's hard to trust. Like, well, if I, if I open myself, will the father give everything? Will he give me what I need? Will he, will he be faithful? Will I, and I, will I be fulfilled? Right. And so I think that's the, the beautiful thing about, of, of advent is because we can we can we can renew our desire that we want to expect huge and beautiful things from the lord and because he actually wants to give them and we don't have to be afraid and to what do i want to say this is 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 to go to um i was trying just so you know why i'm hesitating is or why i'm stumbling is i was trying to recall something but um I'm going to ask your guys' help. Uh, the <laughs> It's part of the mass that I should know, but I'm drawing a blank right now. 
<clears throat> I was I was going through the catechism a little bit this morning on on prayer and right just just this this kind of one of these things that we often try and maybe model and just to to make it explicit again a formative moment is is we we look to Jesus like like we're fascinated with Jesus Jesus we want to live like Jesus and um so we just keep going like, so when we're talking about joyful expectation what does this look like what does it mean we want to go okay what does this look like what does it it look like and mean for for Jesus and um the catechism is really beautiful again it, it reminds us that that Jesus teaches us how to pray that that Jesus um shows us to how how to be in relationship with the father to bring into this like jesus shows us how to have joyful expectation and the terminology which i love i love i love that the catechism uses is is praying with filial boldness this is the idea with Therese, right she's <coughs> she knows that she's a daughter um she knows that god is father and so she can pray with this this boldness i want it the, all <laughs> the boldness the boldness of a daughter um Amen. what is it the, what i was trying to think is like what are we saying the the our father to intone to invoke the our father at the Mass informed by divine teaching at the Savior's command. At the Savior's by... command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, like just this, we did, we dare to ca- call God Father. We we dare to pray with filial boldness. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Go ahead, Father Angel. Bro, I was gonna. I don't want to cut you off, but in one of the accounts in the Our Father, in I forget which <laughs> is obviously Matthew or, or Luke's version, uh, they see Jesus praying. Mm-hmm. It's so the experience that Luke, so they experience Jesus praying and then they're like, Lord, teach us to pray. And so it's this gazing upon and being fascinated with whatever Jesus was experiencing when he turned to his father as a son, asking for everything in this place where he is vulnerable and waiting for the father to act. And then the, the disciples or apostles mm-hmm. see that. And there's this something ignited in them to say, I want that. And we want that because that's what we were made for. That's why Jesus became man to teach us that that ultimate deep desire in us to encounter the Father, the one who gives us everything. And they cor- that was a moment of correspondence where they saw Jesus and they're like, whoa, whoa, I want that. And Jesus is like, I know this is what you were made for. <laughs> and this is why he, he teaches us and shows us what that's like. I, I hate to bring up the opposite example of this, but I think it's just good to hold him like you have a, a, a radical filial boldness like Therese with the older son in the prodigal son story. He sees the extravagant love of the father poured out on the other brother and he thinks he's missing out. He's like, well, why do you do that for me? Right? So it's like the opposite of confidence to say like, hey, listen, like you don't love me like that. You don't want to give me good things like that. And what's so, there's a lie sown in the older son's heart that like the father's not good and he doesn't want to do the same thing for me when, and what does the father say? Everything I have is yours. I mean, that's like, I love that line. Like everything I have is yours. Like you, you're my son. And, and I, I give you, I've given you everything. Like I'm not holding out on you. I'm not holding something back. It reminds me of the, the parable. It's like, I, you know, like it's the, the, the generosity of God. Like I'm not, I'm not be going against my word here. Like this is who I am. And I over, overflow this, but the son cannot receive it because he's threatened. He's hurt. And he's convinced that the father, he doesn't have this confidence mm-hmm. in the father. And I think a lot of us, we can live like that sometimes. Like, wait, like, why does the Father love me like that? But I think that Jesus wants to come and teach us. No, no, this is this is who the Father is, and I'm here to show you that this is how He wants to love you. I wonder if, like, the 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 younger son or the older son goes to the father, like, hey, Father, I want to want to party too. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's exactly. do it. <laughs> totally um but but it the what's what's coming together is like it's it's interesting because advent it's about in, in one way it is about jesus like preparing our hearts to receive jesus, jesus with joyful expectation but also jesus shows us how to like what the heart is supposed to look like <laughs> absolutely you know and i was just going to say what the heart is supposed to look like we have some let's just acknowledge our small heartedness mm-hmm and, and oftentimes the fruit of the way I live or the fruit of the way I worry or the fruit of the way that, that uh, allows me to be anxious or, or afraid of life or uh, threatened by others, that's a fruit of my small heart. And so what's awesome about Advent is that Jesus comes to, to break our hearts open and to expand our hearts. And how does he do that? He gives us a new heart. He gives us his own heart. Mm-hmm. And in relationship with Jesus, it's not, he takes our stony hearts like Ezekiel says, and I will give you a new heart. You know, and it's it's the the grace of His own heart through the sacraments poured out on the cross for us that we experience what it means to have huge hearts, the capacity to have mm-hmm. what what's the word I love 
uh, we we often talk about magnanimous hearts, great heartedness, big heartedness, hearts that are are not limited <laughs> by our own weakness and our own smallness, but that can be blown open and so stretched uh, by the Lord, right? And that's when we have hearts like His, then we can love like His. Mm-hmm. And that I mean, is isn't that the the end game is to love like the Lord? Well, I need I need a, a remedy for my small heart. And it's in a, in a very similar um, sort of attitude or vein as this Jeremiah prophet or um, Jeremiah prophecy is the one of Ezekiel, right? Like I'll I'll sp- sprinkle clean water and probably I'll I will put what is it? I'll put a new heart within my, you. I'll I give, will put my spirit in you, and I will give you a new heart. I'll yeah. give you a new heart. Like that's like the Lord wants to give us a share in His own heart, and it's a heart that prays that's magnanimous and prays with filial boldness because it knows the Father. The Lord wants to do that. I will do it. He says, "Isn't that the same thing we basically say on every episode?" <laughs> Uh, we're consistent. We'll get, people got to no, give us that. We're consistent. No, and I say that as a beautiful. I say that as a. I say that as a beautiful thing. Like it's it's a it's a real uh, golden thread, right? This this reality, and it comes up in new scriptures, and it comes up with new sense of what Advent is and what the church season is. But this isn't this it. This is what this is the truth. And when the truth's kind of dropped, and you're like, oh, we say that all the time. Oh yeah, because it's true. <laughs> and we, I mean, we talk about the saints a lot, but we reference in the last episode that we watched that Mother Teresa documentary. And it's just so beautiful because we talk about Therese. We talk, you can talk about any saint, basically. You can talk about a lot of the holy friars that we know, but you see it in Mother Teresa. That's why that documentary is amazing because you see her, like it's actually her. What other modern day saint is captured in a documentary like that? I don't, I've never seen one, but she has a new heart. Like she had this experience with Jesus and something happened to her heart. And so she was, she was able to be stretched open, to be broke open. She lives with a new heart and her, her, her capacity to love and lay down her life and to surrender and to be joyful in the midst of great suffering is just really like, this person lives different than I've ever like seen before. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think it is this, this new heart that Jesus says, I will give it to you. I will come. I will do this in you. And Mother Teresa is like, okay, let's do it. And she was humbled and emptied so Jesus could come in and give her his heart. We're going to get into Mother Teresa more in a minute, but I'm, we're going to work our way up there. Is that all right? Hey, I'm ready when you I are, I didn't bro. mean to Do you need to take preempt. a bathroom break right now? Oh, wow. <laughs> and so, oh, he went there. <laughs> hey, I didn't mean, we, I didn't mean to preempt have, you. I was just trying to say that the new heart thing was alive. And You didn't answer my question. Are we going to be okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally okay. And now would be a I'm good okay. time to take a potty wow, break. Wow. <laughs> we're really going to make potty breaks? Yeah. Was the, reference some? What's a give us a Rascal Flat song to reference? Seriously, teardrops on my guitar. Yeah. No, that's, bro, that's your breakup Swift. song. That's bro, a Taylor Swift. Uh, you're jealous. It's okay. What are you bro. You're jealous when, that I had this high school experience. It's just funny <laughs> when I went to when I you know broke up with the one to go to Africa. She sent me with a one CD as Rascal Flats, <laughs> so it had sentimental to me. Um, wow. But I love, anyway, I love Jesus. <laughs> Me too. And uh, my vocation, 100%. So a couple of thoughts is, is first, we're going to get into a little bit of what um, Beth Davis shared in the Advent journal that we're having a very manly approach to. But what I was going to, what I wanted to say is that there's something about, um, I don't know if I want to go there, but uh, we'll do it anyway. Because in, in, um, as, as the Lord reveals the divine name to Moses, I am. Right, there's some, there's something about that which is, um, it like it's outside of tense. I don't know how the thing works, but it's like I always have been, I am, I always will be. Mm-hmm. That's right. There's something of yep. that of, mm-hmm. of the divine name, and I think that's something about that of of what we're looking at today is like um, is is I, like I have, I am, and I will do like just this 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 boldness, this confidence that the Lord has acted and He's revealed His faithfulness in history. At this exact moment, he continues to seek us and he continues to work in our lives and those we love, but also, and that's not going anywhere in the future. He'll continue, he'll continue to care for us. I just think, I think there's something of that. That's just of the nature of God. It's just who he is. But Beth shares a couple of stories and one of them just to sort of give a shout out or a word of acknowledgement. We're not, this isn't the one we're going to talk about, but she shares some about her going to confession and some of the, the healing that took place there. But she refers to the kind overworked priest in the confessional. And just so you know, a lot of your, if you're a good priest these days, you're going to be pretty beat up. You're going to be pretty stretched thin, mm-hmm. overworked. I just appreciate seeing that. Is that all right? Yeah, Absolutely. amen. 
you know, I think we know a lot of, of pastors and parish priests who are really just in it. They're pouring themselves out out of love for the the bride. So if you if you know a good priest, feel free to pray for him and affirm them and thank them. But she she shares the story and she does she kind of shares a vulnerable story, and it's really beautiful about um, her dad wasn't Catholic and about kind of her work to try and bring him to faith. But at some point, it's almost like she kind of she kind of doubted it. She kind of she stopped praying for it. She didn't think it was going to happen. And um, and through some just like unique graces, one day, you know, family dinner, he says, you know, I'm going to become Catholic and Divine Mercy Sunday, he he enters the church. And she kind of looks back on it. It's like, I, I, I essentially it's like the Lord was faithful and I just doubted, you know, and just, and just kind of that correction of if, if it we're just to, if we're doubting, you know, like, okay, Lord, I need your help because I'm doubting right now. I'm just going to, I need your help to get rid of that. And I want to, I want to have this filial boldness. I want to have this confidence. I want to have joyful expectation of you that you have worked, that you continue to work and that you will always be working for my good and good of all. <clears throat> what do you guys, you guys got something on that? Not until you want me to talk about mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about divine mercy there. Yeah. If I, I sent you want to share another loads of laughs story. <laughs> Hey, um, I'm insecure now about my stories because you I, I was told story? that Father Angel in show prep was like, um, I think you should definitely tell your stories, but your stories are sometimes intense. <laughs> They're heavy and intense. Which is great. Just beautiful. What's the book recommendation you're sharing today, Father Father Angelus? Which one? What's the, what's the what's that book over there? Oh, it's called Advent of the Heart. Is it about a priest in a concentration camp? Yep. Speaking of light reading. <laughs> Speaking of light reading. Hey, listen, I'm just being faithful to what happens in my life with Jesus. You have a beautiful story. Please tell it. <laughs> and he's over here talking about how we all have small hearts. <laughs> yeah, I totally I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Father Angelus was just like, I think it's just good for you to recognize. Let's be honest. I'm going to tell a story about French fries. <laughs> and, and you're going to tell a story. I tell, tell a story about a beautiful... <laughs> young man who had a conversion at the end of his life which but we awesome. all do have that's why i tell the notch story all the time because most of our most of my stories are pretty because we live heavy lives and we're in heavy stuff yeah yeah and i'm just not like i don't have like i'm not fun so like you're, you're fun <laughs> that's and, not true and i and i'm intense and so i have these intense stories but do the ones call you out about that do they call you like hey babe, you're pretty intense no i'm not really i mean I'm, i like to i think it's intense it's an intense I like time. to feel i like to think i'm a fun kind of a fun dad like some, some, you just said you weren't fun. Yeah, I have to try. Like, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is the right place to do it. But like, you, you know, you try to be a fun dad. You try to score some points as dads do, you know. But I think I'm an intense guy for sure. You put a fan in their room. Wow. Seriously? Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> you voted against it. I did vote against it. <laughs> like, come on. There you go. You're all, right. all right. We're going to move. You okay. voted against the ping pong table in the refectory. And how many times has that been used? Yeah. Thank you. How's that going? How's that going for you, bro? How's the ping pong table? We got it two months ago. How many times has it been used in two months? Zero, oh zero times. Uh, anyway, we can't play with the one room we want. Okay. The whole point. <laughs> wow, you're calling out your spirit. Okay, I'm going to tell a story that this came alive to me, and this came up in prayer this morning. So I'm not going to be insecure about Father Angelus. <laughs> um, this is just a story about my friend who, who, um, who passed away this past year uh, actually a year ago last week and um and it, it's just a simple story but um i this young man um we'll call him matthew and uh i got to meet him when he was 21 years old and he died when i uh, when he was 25 he was diagnosed with cancer when he was 16 and it was a really progressive form of um uh, like cancerous tumors in his pelvis area and his back so the majority of his of his life from 16 on he was paralyzed and um, I got to meet him and he was an incredible young man. And he, he's the guy who learned magic tricks in the hospital and he'd go room to room like for the little kids make, doing magic tricks to cheer them up. And, and uh, he just had just an, a really beautiful heart. And, How'd you meet him? Um, I was through, there was through a connection of one of our associates, um, this young man, he had been struggling with his faith. And they asked if he, um, through a connection of Peter and Maurice Frangi, mm -hmm. like friends of the Friars, that they were like, can we bring him to the homeless shelter? And um, he's been really struggling and he does magic tricks. So can he come do magic tricks for the guys at the, the homeless men? And they loved him. And, but this is how we met. And so for years we would, we would visit and, and things like that. But, um, but it was clear that the cancer was always going to be a part of his life and that it was just going to be a cross for him. And, 
And it was clear to me over time that he had just lost his faith. He was struggling with God and he was angry with God. He was hurt. He was alone. As a 16 year old, you're going to have those questions. And, and as the years went by, it just like he really struggled to believe that God was good and that God loved him and that he, God had a plan for his life. And so, um, so I was there as a priest, just trying to love him and knew that like, that I wasn't just going to be over like, okay, we'll just believe in God. It's fine. You know, like there was times when we'd get better and, and times when the cancer would come back and, um, there was a particular time I remember where the cancer had just come back and it was really aggressive and they gave him um, six months to a year to live. And I was, we were at his house and, and he was just crying because he was like, I'm going to die and I'm far away from God and all these things. And, and he said, a priest once told me that when it kind of in the midst of my struggle that, that um, he's like, you had to be really careful if you remember, just like to know if you die and with doubt and, and anger and you're angry at God, you might go to hell, right? Like this priest God bless him, but like he was trying to help, I guess. But but it just made this this experience a lot worse for this young man because now we thought God hated him and reject him, and that God wasn't going to come, right? Like in this in this darkness. So so this moment was just really beautiful because he's crying. My heart is just broke for him, and as a priest, I just like felt well up in me, like God's heart for this young man, Jesus's heart, and I was just able to proclaim to him the truth about Jesus. Like, this is not what Jesus experiences of you. Like this, he came for you. He loves you. And, and he wants to be with you now. And I just proclaimed his love and mercy for you right now, even in your doubt, in your fear, your darkness. And I looked up on the wall and, and it, it was, it occurred to me two things. There was a picture of divine mercy and Jesus was just there. Like this was a Catholic home. So I wasn't surprised that Jesus was on the wall, but also it was divine. It was the eve of divine mercy Sunday. And I just had this experience of prayer with this young man trying to proclaim to him the love of Jesus, that Jesus has come for you and Jesus loves you. And this is what he wants to do for you. Even in your darkness, your pain and your doubt, Jesus says he wants to come and break in, right? So it was just so beautiful because I all I could do is just offer him the mercy of Jesus. And, and so he came to confession and he received the sacraments. And from that, from that, moment on um weekly we i would go with apostles to visit him at, at sloan kettering and we take him jesus and and he ended up dying of cancer and i was there gave him you know anointed him and heard his confession and brought him the eucharist and he died as a son of god he he let jesus come to him in his doubt and his fear and and jesus says i will come i'll do this i i'm here i'll give you a new heart like all these things we're talking about and he died as a son of God. And again, this is what Jesus wants to do, not only for him, but for, for, for all of us. Like, I'm not afraid. I will come. I will do this. And he did. And I think that's the, the good news in it is, right, like, so he, he died knowing the father. He died as a son. And so with confidence, we, we trust that now he's, he, can, he lives as a son. Amen. And yet with confidence, we, I mean, to see his parents, like they, mm -hmm. They grew from this, from this doubt, this struggle. Like, why is this happening to my son? To a great confidence. I just talked to his mom last week. And he, she was like, I, I miss him so much and I cry every day, but I know that he's in heaven. And we have confidence in that because Jesus is faithful. I, and God says, I'll, I'll come and do this. Mm. It's beautiful. And it's just God's, it's God's pursuit of us. And it's, it's a, uh, creating a space to see and to expect God to do something and to come. And Father, your open heart and your expectant heart could enter into a situation like that and proclaim God's mercy, right? And so all of us with that gift of, of kind of having a transformed heart allows us to get pulled outside of ourselves and be that expectation and be that, that place where others can experience God's pursuit, especially if they're hurt or sad or confused. Um, and I got to be honest with you, like I didn't, you don't explain that stuff away. You don't like priests don't come in and be like, well, let me explain this to you. No, like you become like Jesus's presence desires to be there. And that's all you really can offer him. Like, this is the way that Jesus loves you. The proposal is that we, in these particular moments, we need to keep Jesus pursuing us in front of us. And that's the gift of being priests, right? If we, like in spiritual direction or confession, it's not like I get to explain everything to you and we understand it and now everything's okay. No, like I get to invite you to, to bring this in front of Jesus.
And in this place, we can live in this messiness, but we are living in front of this truth that Jesus pursues us. And that in his grace, he gives us newness of life and, and forgiveness and his mercy. We get to stay in front of that. And then we live the mystery of what it means to follow Jesus. We don't know what that means. And oftentimes we can't control it. And it didn't mean that my man didn't pass away. Or he, didn't, or he didn't keep struggling. But yeah, all I could yeah. remind him is, is that Jesus said he will come. He said he'll give you a new heart. He said like all these things. like, And he did. But it, it was his faithfulness. And really through, through you, through the men who visited him, through the sacraments, through the Eucharist, through the confession, like, like literally sacramentally, Jesus came again and, and again, again and, and again, again and again. And so the battle of, of, of the Christian life, but the battle of Advent is, do we keep Jesus in front of us? And do, we, and do we recognize that his pursuit of us, is, is this the, the reality of our life? And do we believe that he will come over and over and over again? And when he, to keep, <laughs> I, 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 but also do we have the, like, when he comes, how he comes, do we have the eyes to see it, right? Like at, at Advent, at, the, at, the, at Bethlehem, he comes in the form of an infant. And, and in the story with, with Matthew, he comes in the form of a, a priest and he comes in the form of bread and wine and he comes through the form of community. But like, you have to have the eyes to see it. So that is part of it. Like we pray with, we, we, we give God availability and we pray with joyful expectation and filial boldness. And, um, but we also like, can we see it? Like we keep Jesus in front of us. Can, can we actually see him when he is coming? Um, Amen. before I kick it off to you, cause father, before I give you permission to speak, <laughs> Father Angelus. Yes. I like that. Um, speak, child. The bathroom break? Are we still good? <laughs> By the innocent? Wow. I'm, Bro, we'll I, see how long that... I appreciate your care for me. Can you hear this up? I did drink a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the Sisters of Life, they have like an, they have an annual... They call it like... An, piercing beauty spearhead of evangelization <laughs> something they call it something like that something nunny where all <laughs> where all the sisters get together and they talk about beauty and culture and just sisters only. just the just, yeah it's just the sisters it's just them but i've had the, i had the chance to to celebrate i'm kind of like inserting myself as the um the pseudo non-official chaplain because i've had i had the mass for them and i was preparing i was going to be given the homily at this one too but then they had to postpone it because of um, COVID, but the, but the word for me is this, is the, like the poetry is real. And this idea that like, like the, the beauty and the, the story of all of like God's work in the midst of sort of nature and in the work in our life, like it's real. Like there's this beautiful story, this beautiful unfolding of God's plan and God's heart and God's love for us. It's all around. We just have to have the eyes to see it. Mm. Um, and, and I, I use this, this idea of like, if you were to, like if you were to break down on like a really deep sort of technical level, um, like a smile, you'd be like, you know, these nerves do this and blah, blah, blah. And it can be like, like really sort of like sterile, but then you like, but, and, and that like creates like a, a smile, like, and, and that's sometimes what we do with life is you kind of get into like the details and you see just the technicalities and you can sterilize and take the beauty and the poetry out of life and the love story, which is our lives. Um, but with the eyes of faith, we, we can see that the poetry is real. We can see that the music's real. We can see that, that the, the love story is real. And so part of right, this Lenten journey is, or this Advent journey as well is, is praying for the eyes to see the ways in which the Lord and his goodness and his beauty and even his romance um, continues to come to us day in and day out. So I don't know. That's beautiful. beautiful. There you go. So, Father Angelus, you, you were now saying have, that with your eyes closed. You were saying that because like, it was like because there's, it's there's like it's really beautiful, but it, it's just true. Like there, God, it, uh, God is at work. Like I, I have done. I am doing. I will do. Um, I will give you a new heart. I'll cl sprinkle clean water upon you. I'll make a new covenant with you. I'll write your law in your heart. I'll make you. I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Like this is all happening. Thank you. I've had to sit through two long explanations. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm They're just... not explanations. They're stories from our hearts. <laughs> okay. I preached this morning and it's funny just because it sums up and I, I dropped this at the end of my homily and it wasn't even written down, but uh, what did I say? I said, to see is to be set free. To see is to be set free. Um, and 
I'm continually confronted and haunted by this documentary by Mother Teresa. And I kind of feel, brothers, and I, I said this in the last episode too, but I, I kind of feel like all that documentary was following her around and watching her look at people. And then certainly she had an affection for people. I don't I want to say th- look at people and touch people because she's a very affectionate woman <laughs> and all the missionaries of charity. But it's beautiful, brothers, because uh, it just reminded me, uh, yeah, just have a, a real blessed opportunity to be a part of a uh, ministry in New York and New Jersey that that uh, just really creates community and it, with kids with special needs. Can, can I jump with the question? You, you referred to Guatemala. Was that a, like a, a big moment for you? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, because I I also was able to go in Guatemala to a hospital with kids with special needs, and so that was a real memory for me because it, my heart kind of longed just to experience what we experienced and kind of, and we we were taking a tour of it. We weren't really ministering, but if you could have just left me there um, with these kids that were kind of abandoned by their own families, and, and it was Franciscans who were in this hospital, maybe we'll do a sabbatical there or something. <laughs> so, yeah, I was I was telling somebody the cool thing was is that I couldn't speak, but they couldn't speak. And so we just got to be together and we were like blowing bubbles and doing, doing <laughs> things. I'm like, this is like, mm. this is it. Right. And so, and it, it fits in with my, the idea of seeing, right. I, on, on this a pilgrimage I've, I've gone to with, with kids with special needs to Lords. Um, there was this young kid, we'll call him, I'll change his name just to make, uh, we'll call him Michael. And Michael, uh, was uh, autistic and and Michael was away from his parents for the first time or not I shouldn't say the first time but on this trip and Michael was protesting and so he wasn't eating he's like a teenage kid and he had yeah and he was just kind of not eating he was like well uh, you took my parents away from me and took me halfway across the world and I'm not gonna eat <laughs> so at some point <laughs> <laughs> I had met him and I gave him a little fist pound initially and he was he was was happy about that and excited about that. So at some point they were like last ditch resort, let's have the priest try to get him to eat. And so I sit down next to him and he's a plate full of French fries. I'm like, dude, what is not the like about this hot plate of French fries, right? And he was kind of staring off and mad, right? And I kind of got his attention like by just waving my hand and I kind of did the whole, hey, look at me. And we had this beautiful moment of him looking at me and me looking at him. And then I, I put my hand out for a fist pump and he, and he hit my hand and I took the ketchup and sprayed it all over the French fries and handed him one and he ate it. And he ate the entire plate of French fries, but he wouldn't eat it if I didn't hand it to him. <laughs> I love it. Right. And then there was one, there was one left and we were just kind of hanging out cause he was eating and it was just beautiful because And it didn't, this experience became kind of like about him, but it was also about, or it was about me helping him, but then also him kind of, and he then got my attention and gave me the whole, hey, look at me. And he took the last French fry and handed it to me, you know? And so it was just this beautiful, like seeing one another, we, there was a freedom in, in not just being able to eat, but to experience like this really in-depth reality of God. And of course, God, God comes to us and God wants us to eat and God wants us to, but it was like this beautiful, contemplative, meditative experience of, of when you actually long to see God in someone and you experience God and you look for God, uh, there's a freedom that happens, not just to do what we should do and not just to, to eat French fries, but to, to go deeper in life. And, and to go go below the surface and go. And so we had this beautiful experience and then we became best buddies. And then he, I had to sit by him at every meal, but he ate, <laughs> you know? And so there was a freedom in, in some sort of my presence there. It set him free. But that was a beautiful, like God says, you know what? I see you too. Here's a French fry. <laughs> Here's the last French fry. And I remember praying that day and it's, it's beautiful. And this, that's why this Mother Teresa documentary, like there's <clears> moments <throat> where those who are sick or the poor or, or the, those kids would look into the camera and just gaze into the camera and, and, and beg for you to see them, and, but beg for, for, to be, for them to be able to see you. And there's, there's reality, my brothers and sisters, is that God is looking for us. He's searching for us. He's longing for us. He's yearning for us. He's hungering for us. And it is in the people we meet. And it's in our family members. It's in our spouses. It's in those at work. It's in those we serve. It is those on the fringe. It is those at school. Whatever experience that we have of God pursuing us, it's him desiring to look into our eyes and give us a moment to say, I see you. 
and, and creating this beautiful experience and creating this, this moment to, to see God. And it sets us free. And so in Advent, God, God pursues us and he longs to look upon us. And who, who will be that for us? Will we be that for others? Will we be the, the face of, of, of Christ for others? Will we stop and rest and see our, our family members, our kids, and will we look upon them in a new way? And that's what my homily was about. I was encouraging the postulants. Do we see one another in this way? Do we look at one another in this way? But we can only do that. We can only be set free if we see God coming for us in the face of Jesus in this way. And we see God in his mercy looking at us like that. French fries. French fries. <laughs> Thanks for your French fry. <laughs> You can't reduce that to a French fry story. I know. I yeah, know, I know. bro. Seriously, and that's what we you can't do that with life either. You can't reduce life to the little the little things. It's like there's a deeper there's something deeper going on. The Lord is giving us French fries. At some point, Father Jesus, I want you to. This is not the probably the time, but you have so many beautiful stories from Lord. It's particularly the one where the the boy with Down syndrome says, "Thanks for nothing, and <laughs> <laughs> it's a Eucharistic story." That's beautiful. We'll tell, we'll tell later. <laughs> You're going to tell it at a different time? Yeah, I can tell it at a different time. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now is not the time to do it? I don't think so. (laughs) All right. Actually, I could real fast. Real fast. Go for it. This this, uh, older kid with Down syndrome, he loves the precious blood. And because of just the amount of people there, we couldn't give away the precious blood. And so he comes up and I give him the body of Christ and he stands there. He's the last one to receive communion. And then I walk away. And then his, his, his helpers have to come in and help him back to the seats. And he is angry with me because I didn't give him the precious blood. So he is standing in the back of this massive church with tons of people in it. And he yells, thanks for nothing, Father Angelus. <laughs> <laughs> and it's beautiful because in the next, I didn't realize what the, the sensitivity was. And so his name is Charlie. And so I, last Charlie, I was like, okay, we'll work it out. You come to communion last. I'll give you communion and I'll give you the precious blood. And so he waited there for me, a huge smile on his face. I gave him the precious blood and he just walked away super happy. And then he stands up in his place and uh, in the back again. And then he starts, and this is this why it could fit in. I'm sitting down after communion. And all of a sudden from the very back of the church, Charlie gets away from his helpers and he's coming up that center aisle. He's coming for me. And he comes up and he gives me a hug comes up into the sanctuary, <laughs> into the sanctuary, mm-hmm. and he just gives me a hug. And he said, thank you, Father Angelus. <laughs> and he went back with a big smile on his face, and then he went to like, like this to everybody in the chapel. Thumbs like, up. Thumbs up. <laughs> and he went back to his seat. I was like, that's so awesome. <laughs> it went from thanks to nothing, <laughs> thanks for nothing to walking down the center aisle, and just he just wanted to brush his blood. I was like, and Jesus comes to give us, give him himself to like this. Anyway. I'll share one Eucharist Advent story, and then we'll, we'll start to come in for a landing. Is this is uh, one of the things we would do in Honduras pretty regularly is communion calls or like home, like visits to the homebound, and particularly those who are who are dying. That was uh, one of the priests was going, and um, so the, this family member had become Catholic, but most of the family was evangelical, and so they're praying. This is so the priest has the Eucharist with him, and he and he's, he's walking by, about to come in. He hears uh, hears them saying like, um, "Come, Lord Jesus, come." Then Espiritu Santo, then Jesus, then Jesus, like, uh, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. And, and the priest was like, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming, I love it. Yeah, the, ge- the, the gift of the way in which Jesus really does um, come to us, make his home with us in the most blessed sacrament. And that we want to have eyes to see that that's truly him and what that means. Amen? Amen, bro. Emmanuel is with us. And, and this is just to, to kind of come in for a closing. This is from, from Chica. So we kind of took, so she's one of the authors again of the, in the Blessed is She Advent devotional. And I'm stealing this from the next chapter. I hope this is not, this is not me putting out some sort of editor, editorial um, passive aggressiveness. This is just, we're going through it thematically a little bit differently. But so I'm, I'm stealing stuff and shuffling their deck of their commentary. You're going to get an email. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the email going to say? Th- Thanks for nothing, Mark <laughs> <Mary>. <laughs> Um It is God's nature to be trustworthy and keep his promises. And calling Jesus Emmanuel, God is with us. We are not just given a name to call our Lord, but we are given a promise. It is a promise that no matter what we experience in life, whether we want to fight or flee or freeze, Jesus has not and will not abandon us. When life is hard and we can't see a positive outcome, especially when we want to give into despair, let's strive to cast our cares upon the Lord and be willed and be filled with His joy. Um, right? This is this is mm. 
the faithful one, like Jesus Emmanuel, it's it's a name um, that has that's like that is a promise um, because of who the person is, right? Like yeah, I, Yahweh, I I am, I was, I am, I always will be. Like Jesus, Yahweh saves. Like I'm I'm at work. I always have been. I always will be. Um, seeking your good, pursuing you. Um, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. The Lord Jesus, help us to see that we may be free um, in this life and know that we are sons and pray with the filial boldness as you have shown us. And just this last, these these words of hers, which um, one of the, I think Paul tells us at some point, like, cast your cares upon the Lord um, because, because he cares for you. So my brothers and sisters, this today... Certainly this Advent always, we, we know the Lord's come and we know he's already here and at work in our lives. Um, we know he is faithful. He wants to make a new covenant, put his law within us, give us new hearts, um, be our God. And he wants us to be his people. And so don't be afraid to pray with Philly boldness, with big heart, magnetic, magnanimous hearts. Um, and then trust your cares to the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord. It's so beautiful because he truly cares for you. Amen. 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 Cool. And um, maybe we'll pray, and then you have to answer those last question, the questions from the very beginning. Is this like I was waiting for you to stop? Is this a good time to go to the restroom? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one you did it last time. Just so you know, you're making fun of yourself. But this is like this is the time you chose last time. It was like almost exactly this time. It's like, like what are you doing? Oh, bro. <clears throat> Why don't you pray? You in the name all. of the Father. <laughs> And the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you for my brothers and for the ways in which you come to me through them. We entrust to you those um, those you've brought to our lives, especially those we've spoken with today. We thank you for um, your presence and your work in their lives and for the gift that they have been to us. And we entrust to you. Um, we cast our cares upon you because we know that you care for us. And so with filial boldness, Father, we entrust to each of our listeners we beg you to pour out upon them uh, in, in an excessive way all of the graces they need, that they may see that you truly are who you say you are, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, that you are with them working for their good, and that we can trust you in all things. And as you come to us, Lord, especially in scripture and in sacrament and in our brother and sister, may we see you. Grant us the eyes to see the ways that in which you come each and every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Father, Amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Which of you wants to go first? I'll go first. I'm ready. Uh, obviously, I would take Captain America. Obviously. Of course you would. That's Just so predictable. You know, like, uh, that's predictable. right. Predictable. And you love the fact, like on your email, you have a little, you have a cartoon with, hey, A for Angelus. <laughs> I thought Shep- it was for Captain America. I know it is, but you know what I mean? Um, so Captain America for sure, because he's, you know, just better than most like as far as like character you like his character, character? yeah the moral character the way he loves his people he leads he is normal he doesn't have special well he does have special powers i, I guess but but anyway. he's you think he's a better guy than superman yeah for sure okay. i mean i have nothing against superman but i just pretty pretty, anyway. pretty judgmental um, he, <laughs> captain america is likable everybody likes captain america anyway uh cartoon character sid from ice age because he's a good <laughs> friend and he's sarcastic mm. <laughs> And those those work well together. And he's faithful. He's faithful to his friends, but he has no problem being sarcastic to his <laughs> friends, which is kind of my love language as well. Not <laughs> tearing people down, but the whole yeah. Anyway, and then I'll take Father Innocent away. That was predictable too, but come on, I it's predictable. Iron Man, Iron Man, totally called it. Just because he's like I like Iron like I, I like edgy people, and he's edgy and he's funny. You want to be on an island though with him for. Like a long time. <laughs> yeah, be, I feel like he's gonna, still go he might that. be a jerk. Absolutely. No, I think we'd be friends. Like we'd be friends. I I love edgy people. I think we'd be friends. I have no guess for your cartoon. Um, that's a good question. I I'm trying to um. I think this is just coming to me now because I think it'd be fun and I think, um, he also is faithful. Uh, Hammy from Over the Hedge. Oh yeah, that's a. I have no idea. The little squirrel. It's a little, it's a little squirrel. squirrel. He's he's just a. He has a lot of energy. They called me Hammy when I was a postulant because he has a lot of energy and he's yeah. like, hey, everybody. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Falu totally. called me Hammy. He's like, we were watching the movie together. He's like, you're Hammy. <laughs> I can see that. High energy. But he's really faithful. He's a good friend. He's, he's kind. 
but he has he's like really he trying excited. to care for people he's just excitable so that'd be my cartoon and then i take fallen angels too that's cool i'll be all right i'll be all right without you guys <laughs> Hey, bro, taking PT. Oh, you're bad. taking PT. You're taking PT. You're already taking Don't turn bro. that back out around. I don't feel bad. Don't, don't feel bad. Don't take. Don't put that. Out. You already took PT. No, it's all right. Whatever. You guys are. You guys are brothers. <laughs> I, thought I, guess, we were, I thought we were all brothers. The I challenge thought. is, I just get sad when I see you most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You see me most that was of the time. Dramatic. <laughs> Man, bro, <laughs> don't okay. take. No, don't okay. take that personal. No, guys, have fun. Have fun on your island. <laughs> I'll be. Whatever. You'll be with. I'll just have a podcast by myself. You'll be with PT. Hanging out, and you said well, people who like to leave you alone, and that no, that, that wasn't me. That was uh, somebody else. That's a postulate. I was thinking about Simba. Would Simba be good on the island? Uh, yeah, I think Simba's a cartoon was, character. Simba, Simba. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Probably one of the other dudes would be more fun though. Now you know why I'm so angry because I'm the outcast. Thanks for nothing, <laughs> <laughs> Father Innocent, Thanks. Father Angel. Thanks for nothing. All right. <laughs> Grateful for you, and uh, have a good week. Pray well. Because that's what's all. I mean, the Lord's coming. The Lord's coming, and we gotta receive Him. Filial boldness, boom, baby. Big desire, joyful expectation. Big desire. Magnanimous <laughs> hearts. Poco a poco, get out of here. Get out of here. Poco a poco, vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos, and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little, we learn a little more each day that God is love.